there aren't many products in the RV industry that are truly groundbreaking and innovative. But today, we're going to be talking about one that is both of those things. It's an absolutely genius product that I think you're going to love. Hi, I'm Jim, and this is Airstreamer. And on this channel, not only do we have do-it-yourself videos like this, but we have fun travel adventures. Michelle and I travel the U.S. in our Airstream that we've named Gemini and visit fun sites along the way, usually taking the road less traveled. Sometimes our trips go perfectly and sometimes unexpected things happen, both good and bad. But what I'm gonna talk about today is one of those new and innovative products that can help protect you from disaster on the road. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the HaloView BT, which stands for Bite Tango 7, the HaloView BT7 with TPMS. And that's right, this is a backup camera that comes complete with a TPMS system. So it helps eliminate some dashboard clutter. If you're anything like us, not only do you have a backup camera on your dashboard, but you have a TPMS sensor on your dashboard as well. Because in today's world, with all those crazy drivers out there, you wanna be able to keep your eye on them and keep your eye on your tires as well to make sure you don't have a blowout on the road. So like most of you, I've got a backup camera monitor right here, and over here, I've got our TPMS monitor as well to keep track of all of our Airstream's tire pressures. But with this new BT7 backup camera with integrated TPMS from HaloView, I'm gonna be able to eliminate that tire pressure monitor to ensure that we have a totally clear view both in front and behind us as we tow Gemini down the road. So let's look at what's actually in this box. Let's open it up real quick. And if you remember, I did a video earlier. In fact, I'll put a link to it right here. And if you're not watching on a computer or a phone, I'll put a QR code over here as well to that video where we actually installed the HaloView system onto our Airstream, which was great because it took the place of our Voyager camera system that actually had filled with water and was totally worthless to us. It didn't do anything. But in this box, this new box, not only does it come with the backup camera? There's a monitor that has both the backup view and the TPMS view integrated right into this. There are, to ensure your TPMS signal is strong, there have not only this one signal booster for the TPMS system, but it actually comes with a second one as well. So it comes with two boosters, so you can put one up at the front of your trailer, be it a fifth wheel or whatever. But if you have a really long travel trailer, you have a second one that you can put as well, kind of midway. They recommend if you need that, one be put kind of near the rear axle because it'll grab the signals right off the TPMS and send a stronger signal up to the signal booster or repeater that you're gonna put kind of near the hitch area. And then this will send the signal to the all-in-one monitor that's gonna have everything right there for you. So anyway, this seems really nice. That's great that they do that. Also in our kit, we have four tire pressure sensors that are right here, and these screw right onto the valve stems of the tire, and they do take batteries right there, and it's marked. When you open these up, it's actually marked right there. It takes a CR1632 battery. It's right there, so you can't forget it. The batteries are included, but not pre-installed into these. So the batteries are just gonna go right into those. And then these are gonna screw right onto our valve stems. And they say it's really easy to pair. Now, these come, these kits come with either four or six of these tire pressure monitors. Because we are a dual axle trailer, our Airstream has the two axles, so just the four tires. And so when HaloView asked me which one I needed, I just said I just need the one with the four sensors. There's also two mounting brackets that they include, um, if I can get one out of here. This is the one that has the 3M VHB adhesive on the back, and then they are adjustable, and then they have a ball mount um, so that you can kind of swing it around and turn it and get it all set to where it needs to be so you can stick this to your dash or they have a clear plastic 
that you, it's like a static cling you stick in your windshield and you can stick this to that and that's really secure. They also have a suction cup type mount. So that's pretty much everything that's on this level of the box. As we move this out of the way, just gonna set this out of the way over here. The monitor can be powered either through a cigarette lighter and plugs in or through a USB port which is really handy because we have a number of USB ports on our Ford F-150. So that's how I've been doing this. I've just been plugging this into one of the USB ports and then the USB-C plugs right into the side of the Halo View and that supplies the power for it. So that's really nice. Um, they also have some mounting brackets and hardware for the um, repeaters. You've got little zip ties so that you can zip tie that down so it stays very stable. And then they have these special locking nuts as well and their own little proprietary wrench so that you can lock these TPMS sensors onto your valve stems to make sure that nobody steals them or they stay secure all the time. Here's the batteries we mentioned that were in there. What other goodies are in here? Here's, um, oh, the whole camera mounting system, of course, um, that we have already got. Oh, oh, I wanted to mention, too, really nice thing is that the camera that we've installed on the Airstream is fully compatible with this new system that incorporates the TPMS. Now, if you already have the HaloView BT7 system and you say, wow, I should have waited and got one when they had the TPMS integrated into it, Fear not on that because they tell me they're going to come out with a version that is just going to have the new monitor and the valve stem um, sensors on there. So the valve stem sensors that you'll need and you won't have to buy the camera and all that stuff again because it's just the monitor that's different. And then, of course, the valve stems. You won't need the camera. Now, here's the antennas for the whole system. And I do notice that the antennas are a little different right now than the antennas that were. And this may actually help us out a little bit. I'm gonna film this the other way so that you can kind of see what's going on. So here's our monitor system that we have installed right now. And these antennas, and they won't stand up, they kind of hit the windshield a little bit. I'm thinking these new ones, they are gonna be almost be able to stand up fully. So we may get a little better signal out of this one when, um, when we have the whole thing installed. That'll be kind of nice. So we'll see, that's kind of kind of neat. So I think, yeah, and they're clearly marked monitor in case you can't figure that out. That's why you're gonna need two of them. Here's um, you know some wiring stuff for the camera and there's all kinds of things and pairing cables and everything else to get everything hooked up. If you want to know more about installing the camera, again, I've got the video that I did a while back on installing, removing that Voyager camera off the back of the Airstream and installing this new 1080p high definition Halo View camera. And that is chock full of information. But right now, I think we're going to go outside where it's pretty windy and uh, we're going to start pairing up the tire pressure monitors to the new monitor so we can work on getting this whole thing installed and putting together. So let's go. All right, so we're right here and we're just about to install the pressure monitors onto the tires. Let's get working on that. So let's start by putting a battery in one of these sensors. Open these up. Include batteries, it's really nice. Child resistant, it says I'm gonna need scissors. Oh, ha, get right in there. So let's take off one of these sensors, the first one, and we'll open it up. And we're gonna put the battery in. Right here. And it says the negative side goes down. Nice little label right there. So it should go in right like that. This goes right here. It just screws right together, just like that. So we're gonna use the battery bank here to power the monitor. So I've got that plugged in. We're just gonna plug this in. And the monitor, hopefully it shows up in the sunshine, pretty much instantly powers up and says Halo View. 
In fact, I'm gonna end up bringing the camera over here so you can see it a little better. But then we're, it's a touch screen in this. That's where all the controls are. So we touch it once and it comes up with a menu system for the channels for all the different cameras. This will support up to four different cameras on your vehicle. And we touch it again, and then we get the secondary uh, menu where we can put on our um, backup lines for the cameras. We can set the volume of the microphone, you know, that's for the camera, and the brightness, and we can go into the TPS menu setup system. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So the first thing we've gotta do is we've gotta take off our existing monitors off the tire. And then we're going to install the new one for the Halo View system. So as we access this, press it once, press it again, we get the TPMS, do this. We are on the rear axles and so I just have four tires. This thing will do up to 32 tires, which is pretty cool. But if we orient this, the front of the trailer is there. So I'm actually on this axle right here, that one right there. And then I'm gonna press auto learn and it's gonna wait. And when it feels the pressure going in, it's gonna learn this one right here. That's it, it's set. So we can keep going around the trailer and have it keep learning these. That is easy. Let's get the other two going. So just like before, we're gonna grab one of our new sensors, put in a fresh new battery. And there it is, it's that fast, you can hear it. Now let's get the front axle over here. Again, we're just gonna set up this axle right here. We're gonna turn this one on, because that's where we are in this side. We're gonna tell Auto Learn, it says waiting right there. I screw this on there. Hopefully you can see all of this on the camera and how quick this works. There we are. I've set this up so we can simulate what a tire leak is gonna look like. Normally we'd have the road signal right here, we'd, or we'd you know, be looking behind the Airstream on this. It says no signal because I haven't paired the camera up yet. But let's just unscrew this and we're gonna simulate a fast leak on that tire. And there we are. There's our alert right there. It tells me I got a low pressure. I touch that and it tells me which tire it is. I'm down to zero pounds, low pressure, fast leak. That would be a problem on the road. Let's screw it back in. Let's see how quick it recovers instantly. Look at that. So now we're gonna mount the signal booster up on the front here of the Airstream. And what this thing does is it takes the signals that are being transmitted from the little sensors that are on the tires on those valve stems. And you know, those can't be the biggest radio station. It's not like some huge radio station tower antenna that's able to send a big signal. So it's kind of a weak signal. This is strong enough, it hears that signal, it can receive it, and then it boosts it and kind of resends it up to the receiver that's gonna be up in the truck. So we're gonna mount this to the side here and we're gonna get the wires in. So first, let's, um, oh, there's another thing I wanna show about this. This thing actually comes apart right here, so you aren't gonna damage anything by trying to hook it up, any of the electronics in this part. So let's get these wires put in here. So we're gonna put them right through this hole right here in the battery box, and that'll get these little alligator clips up into here. And from there, we will be able to get these onto the battery. So we're gonna pull the rest of the wire up all the way through like this, and get this thing ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the receiver um, onto the frame here of the Airstream. But before I do that, I'm gonna wanna clean this off to make sure I've got all that road grime and uh, everything out of there. So let's take our towelette and uh, get this wiped off.
All right, now that we've got that wiped off clean and dry, I'm ready to peel off the um, release paper from the um, two-sided tape that's on here. They use the 3M VHB, so this is gonna be really nice, really waterproof for us. And this thing is, um, whatever they call it, there's a, I'll, I'll put it down on the bottom below, I can't remember, but there's a term for these that are totally weatherproof. And uh, that's what this is. So this can be out in the weather, which is a really good thing because I could mount it up inside here a little more or something. But if I do that, then it's gonna kind of interfere with the radio signal. I'm not gonna get as strong a signal. And quite frankly, that's what I'm after. I'm after the strongest signal I can get on that tire pressure monitoring system. So let's get this stuck on here right now. Now that we've got that signal booster mounted, we're gonna start worrying about getting all the wiring hooked up. And one of the things that Halo View does, and I think some other manufacturers do this as well, they put these little alligator clips on there. So you can clip these right on the battery terminal posts to get electricity to this thing. And yeah, that's a good idea, I think, temporarily. I'm a little concerned about the longevity, you know, putting 30,000 miles on the, Airstream and everything with just these clips. So in the future, we're gonna be getting some um, lugs to put on there and actually screw them right down onto the terminal post here. But for now, this should work out just fine for us. The other thing I wanna do is, you know, some situations you need quite a bit of wire and in ours, we really don't. So I'm gonna temporarily kind of hook these two together right here and then kind of see where this thing really needs to be mounted, the length and all, and I think right about like that. Then I'm just going to, kind of like it was in the package, just fold the wire up a little bit, just like this, so I don't have all this wire hanging all over. We want it kind of neat. I don't want to cut the wire yet. I'm gonna do that when we get the, um, you know, kind of the final thing and I get those lugs mounted on there. But let's get this put up right here and then let's grab the twist tie that this was tied up with in the package. And I'm just gonna put this twist tie on here. I could use a, like a zip tie on there. That'd probably be a little better. And if this was gonna be more of a permanent installation, that's how I'd do it. But again, I want the ability to very easily take this apart in the future. And uh, so I don't wanna do anything too, too permanent today at this point. So I'm gonna disconnect those two again, so this is not connected. Then I have no danger of the wires doing anything. So we're just kinda of set this right in here, and we're gonna hook this guy to our two battery terminals that are right in here. So I'm just gonna take the alligator clip, and I'm gonna clip the positive to the positive right there. If I can get my fingers to work. So we'll clip that right on there. Kinda of like mini jumper cables, huh? And then we'll clip the negative next to the negative. Right there, and that'll kind of hold on. I think that'll be good enough for a couple thousand miles down the road. So now we're all hooked up there, and we're going to put these two things back together. Make sure this is lined up. There's actually a little, um, like a little nubbin on the one side here. You see that right there? little nubbin right there and it lines up with a slot on the other side so we can just push those together and then this screws together just like that and then again we're going to tuck that up inside just a little further and that's that i had taped the battery box open right here so we're going to remove this tape and close ourselves back up and our battery compartment's all sealed our signal booster for the Halo View is all mounted, and now's a chance to see how this works inside the truck. So now we're back in the truck, and I'm gonna change out the monitor system. This is the new one from Halo View, and see it says TPMS right there. Little different antennas on this. They're a little stubbier, and I think that might work out a little better for us, because the ones on the monitor um, on just the BT7 system are just a little bit taller than these but let's get this original monitor taken off and we'll get the new one mounted on. Now 
Now we have the backup cam with the TPMS, the HaloView BT7 TPMS all mounted. So we should be all wired in. Let's go ahead and fire the truck up and we're gonna plug this in and see what powers up for us. And there it is, we've got our view off the back and that's kind of the backyard of where we're staying right now. So we simply touch the screen and I touch it again and I can bring up the TPMS and touch that and look, well, there you can see it's sinking into the tires right now. It's picked up three of the tires so far. We just have to wait for that fourth one to grab. Tomorrow, we're gonna to travel to a new location and we're gonna check this out tomorrow and see how well it all works. The BT7 TPMS also comes with locks, these locking nuts right here to make sure that no one can remove the TPMS sensors from your tires. And let me see if I can flip the camera around and show you how these work too. So these screw on the valve stems first. Right there, like that. And then you take the tire pressure sensor, screw that on there. Then this tightens up onto there like this. Then using the special wrench that comes with it, you simply put it on and tighten that on and that locks these together and you can't get those off. If you're worried ever about these being stolen off your trailer. And as Steve Jobs often said, just one more thing. And that's what we've done to help improve the signal of this Halo View backup camera. Because Airstreams are such an incredibly efficient Faraday cage, it's really difficult for radio signals to penetrate and go through. So we were getting some drops on our signal from the Halo View camera, from the camera in the back, which had the little antenna to the receiver in the cab of the truck. Now we are a 28 foot Airstream and we do have a eight foot bed in the truck. So we're pretty long, we're 53 feet long as we drive down the road. So one thing Halo View offers is an extended antenna. And we got one of those and we put that in. And let me show you how that is. So you can see from the camera, I've got the wire running up and then I've run it along the top of the Airstream and all the way up to the front. And then I've mounted the antenna on a little base right up to the front of the Airstream. And that's gonna move that antenna about 24 feet closer to the truck. And that should give us three to four bars of signal. So we won't have any more drops as we're traveling down the road. And especially if in an area with high radio interference, we've noticed that we go by like a massive cell phone tower or something. And there's some secure radio locations in the US and they're doing some hinky stuff with signals, I think. And this, well, I think will help us stay with a nice solid view in the back. We've had no issues at all with the TPMS signal um, and the booster box that we installed on the tongue, just to give you an update. So, so far so good. We're really liking the Halo View BT7 TPMS system and uh, very, very happy to have it on our Airstream.